Okay, I'm on. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Lamb of God. I am Pastor Tony Kobeck. I just want to thank you for coming today. Got a, got a few announcements before we begin. This Thursday on the 19th, we're having our ham food drive. And um, we're looking for anybody who might be available to volunteer some time. It starts at 8 a.m. And we have a truck comes in full of food. And then it will be unloaded onto tables. And then we hand them out to random uh, people that come by who are in need. So if you're available and, and would love to help us out with that, it's a great uh, after morning. I would say afternoon, but it's a morning. It's a great morning, and I'm going to pray for great weather for all of us, right? Also, for those of you with kids or grandkids, we're having the summer kickoff for our youth. is going to be at our D.C. Ryan's house. He's away at a, uh, he has four nieces and nephews. I don't know what the breakup is, and they're all getting baptized today. So he's there at the baptism, so I'm sure there's going to be a, an awesome blessing. But at his house next Sunday, on the 22nd at 1 o'clock, they're going to have uh, the grill up and running. I hope he's got a grill. Uh, he better have a grill by then, otherwise I'll go get him one. A anyway, it's just, um, he's excited for that, for the parents and youth to come on out and uh, just have some fun and talk about the year ahead. Also, we're hosting Family Promise starting May 22nd. I don't know how many names are left needed to fill for the meal. We only need one name, so if you're available, I, thanks for volunteering, Bannon. <laughs> He's already on there. Okay, if you're available, we need one meal filled still. I'd love for you to consider that. Um, another neat little thing we have in here is... Um, we're listing all of our Stephen ministers that were uh, recently installed and their uh, pictures and names and who they are. Just a, uh, They're a wonderful connection we have to pray with individuals. And, um, and I'm bringing that also up because uh, you may not know Irv, one of our members who's a, a leader of our Stephen ministers. He was hospitalized this week, and, uh, but he's out of the hospital. Everything's good. He had a stint put in and everything's looking better. So we're keeping him in our prayers. Um, other than that, there's uh, lots of little announcements. You're welcome to read through this, but why don't we stand up, let's greet those around us, and uh, we'll begin worship. Follow. 
us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you, you forgave, forgave the iniquity, iniquity of my sin. sin. Let's take a moment and reflect on our sins of this past week and how you and I could have done better. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, poor miserable, miserable sinner, sinner confess, confess unto, unto you all my, my sins and iniquities, iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you all. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise before the King, King the Lord. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the changes of this world, let our hearts be fixed where true joy is found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Please be seated. First reading comes from Acts 11, 1 through 18. Peter, in our reading, is at the house of Simon, and he is on the rooftop praying when God reveals how he is calling all people to him. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air, and I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading. Jesus reveals how he was here in the beginning and he will be here with us in the end. The epistle lesson is from Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall, be, shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our gospel reading, Jesus declares he will send the Holy Spirit to us so that we may all glorify God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you 
to all the truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you won't see me. You will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of the disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves by what I meant? By saying, a little while and you'll not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament. But the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful. But your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby... She no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. like to invite all the children here to come forward for the children's message. Yep, come on down, come on down. Come on, we've got both of you. It's okay. 
We're going to talk about cake today. Come on. Birthday cake. Come on. All right. Good morning. Is he still coming? I know. I'm, I'm a little scarier than Mr. Ryan. Yes. Okay. Good morning. All right. How are you guys doing today? Good. I have a question for you today. I have a picture of something here, and I need some help. Any of you willing to help me? Okay. Here's my first picture. How many of you would like to have some of this? We'd like to eat some of this. You would? One of you? Birthday cake? You guys like birthday cake? It's good, right? Well, birthday cake's good. good. And so how many of you would eat this? Yeah, right? I, most of you would, right? So I got a next question for you. What about this? What is that? You ever see this when you get in the bathtub? What is it? A rubber ducky, right? Would you guys eat a rubber ducky? No? What if I told you it was cake? Would you eat a rubber ducky then? I tricked you, right? Would you eat this? Absolutely. Rubber duckies are delicious if they're cake. Okay? What about this? Ew. What is that? It's a stinky old shoe, right? Would you guys eat a stinky old shoe? No? What if I told you it was cake? Would you eat it now? I'd still be nervous eating this right now, wouldn't you? Right? And, and so today in our text, as this is one of those moments where Peter is called to go and reach new people. So if I showed you this picture here, and I asked you, do these people all look exactly like you? No, there's boys and girls from all over, the, all over right? So who here in the picture do you think we should maybe think about inviting to church or telling them about Jesus? Is there, should we invite one of these or all of them? That's exactly right. All of them, all these people we're going to invite to church. And that's what Peter's being told in the message today. God calls Peter and says... You see all these animals in the sheet coming down from heaven? Just as though you can eat any of these animals from, from bacon to steak to lobster. You can eat any of that. Same way I would like you to invite everybody to come to church. So that's what the story today is about. Is Peter being told by God he had to reach all kinds of people. No matter what they look like, God wants everybody. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Bow your heads, let's fold our hands. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing me here today. Help me to invite others so that they may know you. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Awesome. Thanks for getting us started. Go back to your seats or find somebody who likes you. Either one's good. Either one's good. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our sermon text today, it's from the, the New Testament, from the book of Acts, and it starts in chapter 11. And the sad part is we get the end of the story. We don't get the beginning of the story this morning, and, and I love how it begins because Jesus sends Paul out. He sends Paul out, and, and he tells them to go and proclaim the word to everyone. And because of this, the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. Okay. So let me ask you, who here is an extrovert? Who here is really good at getting outside and doing things? Okay. And who here is an extreme introvert? Yeah, I'm surprised you're even holding your hands up. You're not extreme because the real introvert is like, please don't look at me. Please don't call on me. Please don't, I, I don't want to do anything with this. And so um, in this text today, it's so beautiful the way God works with Peter. See, we're in chapter 11 of Acts, so Jesus has already died, risen from the dead, and then 40 days later, he's already ascended into heaven. And he, the last words that Peter heard was, go and make the, all the disciples of all nations go into Judea, Samaria, and throughout the whole world. 
actually Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the whole world. Now, Jerusalem seems really easy, right? As a Jew, you can go hang out and talk with the other Jews. That's easy to do. That's why introverts, um, your immediate family is okay, and maybe people you work with, but getting outside is a little harder. So we hear this moment, and Peter thinks he's doing what Jesus told him. Because he goes to this city called Joppa. And it actually is important that he's in Joppa, and I'll get to that in a minute, because this city was important somewhere in the Old Testament with a specific prophet. Jesus sends them out. Peter goes and thinks he's expanding, and he goes to Joppa, and he goes and hangs out with Simon the Tanner. Okay, that sounds really generic, right? Um, I'm going to give you guys the bad news. Um, Tanners were the lowest of the low in Jewish society because they used urine to tan hides. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. So they had to collect that from locals. And so it's very shocking to hear these things. So Peter goes and thinks, I'm doing exactly what the Lord wants, right? I'm going to go to the lowest people. And to him, this is Simon the Tanner. He's in his house. And then Peter goes up to the rooftop to proclaim God's word. He goes up to the rooftop to pray. And, and I think it's probably just a common prayer. And then God reveals something that's really amazing. He has a sheet come down from heaven, and Peter's looking at this sheet, and at first he probably recognized these unusual, the, some of these are regular animals, like lambs and bulls and birds of the air. But then he starts to see unclean animals in there, and then Jesus repeats something to him. He says, rise, kill, and eat, Peter. Rise, kill, and eat. Not very detailed, just basic words. Rise, kill, and eat, Peter. And Peter's like, heavens, no. There is no way I can eat all of these things because there's things in there that are unclean, and I'm a good Jew. I would never do that. So God does it again, and he does it a third time, trying to convince Peter, trying to get Peter's eyes to be open to what he's actually supposed to be doing. See, I want to believe Peter is somewhat of an introvert. He doesn't want to leave his safe little circle. He went as far as he could go, as far as he could go with Simon the Tanner, but he couldn't go in one step further. And that's when God gives him this incredible message. Have any of you ever had to eat something that made you squirm? Because that's what this moment is. He's like, he sees a pig up there. Uh, some of us are like, ooh, bacon, that's good. But for him, that's unclean. You don't do that, and it makes you squirm. Have you, any of you ever had one of those moments where you were offered something, you're like kind of wincing? I was invited, a friend of mine who is uh, Asian American, his whole family's from China, and they invited me to his wedding. It was awesome. It was the most amazing wedding I've ever been to. But then we had the meal afterwards. And they put me and my family, they call us round eyes, if you didn't know that. And they put us at the center table, and everybody's watching us because it's all Asian Americans, and they, it, they're great people. And then they, they bring out the first dish is duck tongue. I mean, a plate of duck tongue. And you know what they said? You need to eat this. Next came out sauteed jellyfish, which is like, it's kind of like grilled onions. Not that bad. But the last thing that came out, which I winced really badly, and you might too, was live baby octopus. Seriously. I was like, who would serve that in a wedding? I like steak or roast or, you know, something delicious. And I winced. I was, didn't know what to do. Because they were all watching. And I think this happened on purpose because of who Peter was and where God was sending him. The exact same thing happened. He said, get up, Peter, kill that, and now eat it. You're not even supposed to touch these animals as a, as a Jewish person. You're not supposed to touch the pig. You're not supposed to touch rabbits or web-footed birds or eels or snakes or fish without scales and fish and fins. But I like lobster and crab. I could do that one real easy, right? Crawfish. Crawfish is unclean, too. Sorry. You Cajuns. And so God does this to Peter to open his eyes. 
to where he's headed. I love the Living Last Supper, as we heard at the end, where each of these disciples had to go and minister the gospel message across the globe. The message is for everyone. God's calling the people in the city of Houston. The people in the entire world. And what, what I love about this text, and maybe something we never think about, is, you know, I encourage you to reach out to those people in your household. Encourage them to join us for worship. It's really easy to say, go and reach out to those people that look just like you and me. We need to reach out to them. But if I told you to reach out to the people that don't look anything like you and me. The people we wouldn't expect to walk in these doors. What if I asked you, or and what if God asked you, not me, what if God told you you need to reach out to those people that look nothing like you and I, because we dress really nice, right? Because we come to church all cleaned up. See, that's part of our sinful nature is it's really hard to reach out to people that are nothing like me. And that's what Jesus did with the disciples, and that's what he's doing with us today. And I'll give you a perfect example. And I have an exercise I do with all of our elders here at this church, and I would love for you to try it. When you go out to lunch today, and your waiter or waitress come to take your order, how many of you have actually invited every single time you've had a meal someone to come to church? What about, have any of you ever asked the waiter or waitress, how can I pray for you? Now, every one of my elders should raise their hands. Because to become an elder at Lamb of God, that's a law. You have to pray with your server because they aren't like you and me. They work on Sundays. So let me ask you. I'm sorry, you extreme introverts. I'm going to ask you to do something you probably would never want to do. Is if you go to lunch today, what if you asked your waiter or waitress, hey, before our meal, our family, we like to pray for our food and for our server. How could I pray for you today? And I have a few elders that are introverts, and they say that's the hardest thing in the world to do. To ask your waiter or waitress, do they look different than you? You may say yes, and you may say no. But when's the last time you actually prayed with someone in public? See, that's what Peter was being asked. To go and pray with those people you would last expect to pray with. And you might have a complete mind change if you're willing to try this today. Or tomorrow, or next time you go out. Literally ask your server, how can I pray for you? You might be shocked at the response. I know there's days it's really easy to yell at them for getting your order wrong. But think about it, if you pray with them before your meal, how would you treat them differently? How could we be different to help them? Find some hope. See, that's the hardest part. Is getting out of our shell. We love to be enclosed. We love to keep it to ourselves. But what if we actually were the living, breathing church? And not just inside these walls, but when we leave these walls. Actually, I'm going to give you guys homework. And that is your test. you got two weeks. I want you to come back in the next two weeks and I want you to be raving about what happened when you asked your server, how can I pray for you? Some of you might say, oh, I'm good, I don't want any prayers. And you might be surprised the 95% of the other time, 
how it can change that person's life. The one who feels outside of us. They're just trying to get through the week. See, that's what Peter was supposed to do. He's supposed to reach out to those people that nobody else cared about. That's why he's at Simon the Tanners. But now God is calling him, you got to do more. So what if we actually became the church outside of these walls? How could we impact this city with a simple prayer before our meal? See, it all started as Peter went to the rooftop and he was giving a simple prayer just to God. What if we gave a simple prayer for those people that are unseen? Imagine meeting your trash collector at the street and having a prayer with him. Something you never do. But what if we did that? See, that's why Christ came. He didn't need to do anything for us. He came and died on the cross and gave us the greatest message upon his resurrection. Why don't we share it with others today? Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father... Lord, we thank you for the faith that you have given us. Lord, help us in our introvert minds. Help us to see those around us that we've missed. And Lord, help us to just simply ask them, how can I pray for you so that their lives might be changed? Lord, we ask that you would use us like you used Peter. Use us like you used the disciples. And help us to reach out to those that we've missed. In the name of Jesus, amen. I ask you to please stand and join me as we continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, Very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us men and our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with the glory. Judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our generosity moment. I want to thank all of you for who and for how much you contribute for this church body as um, Each week we gather here and we praise God's name. And I want to thank you for your tithes and offerings. I also want to thank you online that are still worshiping with us regularly. Um, We love you and I want you to know that we're still with you and our prayers are with you for the day that you too will be able to join us here at worship again. But I think this is a beautiful message today. The idea of how we can be generous with others. Why not give a prayer to share? We have this going on. We have professionals that are going to be in the back in the narthex in the lobby where you walked in. During communion, we have our Stephen ministers back there. And if you need prayer just for yourself, please go back and see them after communion. And they'll be happy to pray with you. And they will coach you through this. If you have any questions, talk to them. But I want to thank you. Thank you for all that you provide and all that you give so that we can continue to minister to this community here in Humble.
Thank you. And we'll continue with our tithes and offerings. <laughs> stand. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord of heaven and earth and glorious resurrection of your son Jesus, you have given the promise of our own resurrection. As we await the last day, Lord, calm our hearts and strengthen our faith through our sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have fashioned the church as your heavenly bride for your risen son, grant her your spirit that she may always listen to your life-giving voice and ever declare the message of salvation to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to lead us, your people here at Lamb of God. Lead us by your steadfast love and guide us. Strengthen us that we may encourage those around us. Lord, help us to share this greatest message with others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you hold all people accountable for their responsibilities and have, that you have given them. Lord, we pray for wisdom for all of our elected officials. We pray for wisdom and ask you would bless and watch over President Biden, Governor Abbott, our entire Congress, and all of our judges. Lord, guide them to serve according to your will and for the common good of all. Lord, we also pray that you would raise up those with heroic virtue who defend our liberty, protect those who defend us in the armed forces. We ask you to give peace to the nations, especially to those who are suffering in the war in the Ukraine. Lord, help our leaders find ways towards peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, and you pledge to bring all things to perfection. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, those who are ill and those who are hospitalized today. Pray especially for Irv, for Rick, for Barbara and Scott, for Janie, for Caden, for Neil and Naomi and Betty and Amy, for Janet, Winona, Dan and Eunice and for Kim and for all those we now mention silently in our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would bring them healing in both body and souls in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you gave us the greatest gift in your body and blood, which is in, with, and under this bread and wine. Help us to know as we come forward that we are forgiven, but help us to know that we also are called to find others so they may hear they're forgiven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly me, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way also after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament. My blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, the ushers will guide you forward. And if you'd like to still commune in your pews, there is communion in the side table. Thank you. Oh, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fountainhead of love divine, joyful we thy heaven inherit, joyful we by grace are thine. Please stand. For those of you who have yet to commune at this time, take the small chalice, take the side with the bread, take and open it, take and eat the true body of our Savior Jesus Christ given unto death for you. And now take the side with the wine, take and open it, take and drink the true blood of our Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And upon receiving the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may he strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the faith to life everlasting. Go now in his peace. Amen. Amen. For you children who have yet to receive, may you know that you're amazing children of God. And may the Lord watch over and guide you all the days of your life. <clears throat> Amen. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his, and his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. At this time, please be seated. I'm going to invite our elders and directors to come forward. I'd like all our elders and all our directors to come forward as we are going to be installing them today as we have new elders and new directors. And you can be mixed up. You don't have to separate by groups, okay? Okay. Just so you know, as a church body, we have seven elders of this church, and we have five on our board of directors. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture tells us that God made the church to be a body of Christ made up of many members. Not all the members have the same function, 
So you and I, who are many, are but one body in Christ, here to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We each have different gifts that we use according to the grace of God given to us. And these gifts include ministry, finance, service, generosity, fellowship, evangelism, and teaching, all according to our faith. So today, for those of your existing elders and directors and those that are new, this scripture in Romans reflects clearly who we are. We're one body. We need to be healthy and united as one body as we kick off this, our new church year. We need to be sure that the affairs of the church are properly administered. That's worship and financial. That's spiritual as well as individual in this congregation. We are called to assist and care for the sick and the poor and create harmony among the members and promote the welfare of the congregation and the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. Holiness of life and obedience to Christ is expected of all members of this congregation, but to us as directors and elders. God, unfortunately or fortunately, calls us to a higher standard, and that even includes me. And this year is going to be a great year. I'm looking forward to what God has ahead of us. So I'm going to ask each of you, together as a group, because that's how the body should speak, together. In the presence of God... And as directors and elders of Lamb of God Lutheran Church, do you intend to serve in your elected position as elder or director? Will you continue in the confession, attend worship regularly? Will you support the work God has given you with your prayers, your time, your treasure, and your talent? If so, then answer, I will with the help of God. Now I ask you as a congregation, you're a part of this body also. Don't think you're left out, okay? You're a part of this body as well as these directors and elders. So I'm going to ask you as a congregation, will you do everything you can to help these directors and elders so that they can fulfill the role God has placed on their hearts? Is so the answer, yes, we will. Yes, we will. I now install you as elders and directors in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for these men and women They're part of this body of Christ. Lord, I ask you to use them this coming year. Give them wisdom and understanding and guidance. Help us to reach out to the lost and those that are unseen. As Lord, we know you are the fountain and you are the source of all goodness. You sent your loving son into the flesh so that we may be healed. Just ask you would be with these men and women in the days ahead. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like you guys to turn around. Uh, These are your new directors and elders. You can greet them after the service. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. You may be seated. If you would please stand. The Lord be with you. And And with with thy thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Leave today with this blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us here at Worship at Lamb of God. Uh, we are just blessed by your presence online and, and just continue to pray for all of you who are still staying at home and just uh, staying safe. I uh, just wanted you to know that we'd love for you to contribute. If you'd like to help us out as our mission here at Lamb of God continues, please click the uh, Give Now button at the bottom of your screen. And, and I do want to thank you again and hope that God's blessings pour over you and your life this week.